What up hooligans, it's Jennifer and today I'm wearing my glasses because I just like don't feel like being blind today. Also, welcome back to Elos. Oh. Today, what the frick? <clears throat> today I'm back with another thrift flip. So if you guys have seen any of my thrift flips before, you guys know that I use a sewing machine which helps things go along super quick and super easy. However, I know that a lot of you guys don't have sewing machines, so I decided to take a trip down memory lane back to my peasant days uh, when I didn't have a sewing machine and try my hand at doing a whole entire thrift flip without a sewing machine. It's all good, I be good, I be because I wanted to challenge myself, I still chose things that I would have done in a regular thrift flip with a sewing machine. So it definitely was a more difficult process, but I just want to show you guys that you don't need fancy gadgets and gizmos and technology to be creative. Also, I do realize that it is quite cold now, and I did get these items during the summer when it was still hot. So, you know, I will freeze if I wear these outside, but hey, at least I'll look cute when I check into the hospital for hypothermia. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started. So for the first First thrift flip, I am flipping this super super long gingham skirt. It has this very interesting lace detail at the bottom and has this belt permanently sewn onto the top. I saw this at the store and I loved the gingham print, but the length was just not my cup of joe, so I decided to turn it into a mini skirt. How original! So first I detached the belt using my seam ripper. The belt is actually really worn out and made out of cheap material, so it's become sticky to the touch, which I don't know about you, but like I kind of don't prefer that in items of clothing that I wear. In order to detach the belt from the side of the skirt, I had to rip out the hem. So once the belt was detached, I used some fabric glue to sew the sides back together. I drew a line where I wanted to crop the skirt and just cut straight across. My skirt has this weird extra piece of fabric attached to the right side, which makes the skirt kind of lopsided, which I don't really understand the vision of the original designer, but uh to each their own, I guess. So anyway, I found the middle of the skirt at the top of the skirt and extended a line down the skirt. How many freaking times can I say skirt in one freaking sentence? So then I measured the width of the left half of the skirt and matched it to the right side. I marked the measurements and connected the markings to draw a line for my hem. Then I cut the excess off with an inch of seam allowance and I cut through the fabric and the lining. After that, I realized that there was some excess lining inside that kind of overlapped that I didn't need, so I just cut that lining off. Since I'm going to be using fabric glue, I'm folding both sides of the fabric inwards on the hemline that I drew. And to hold the fold down, I'm going to use my iron to iron it flat. Next, I just fabric glued the two sides together and let it dry. Honestly, it would have been much easier if I just sewed this by hand, which compared to a sewing machine takes a longer time, but compared to fabric glue, it takes a shorter amount of time. Also, this fabric glue is like the worst fabric glue that I've ever used, but it's the only one that I have. So, that's the only thing that I could use, but I would not recommend it. Once the glue was dry, I ironed the seam open so that it wouldn't look flat when I wore it. Onto the lining, I just sewed that together by hand, and since it won't be seen, I can be as wonky as I want to be. I mean, preferably don't be wonky, but like, if you are gonna be wonky, you know what, let's just move on. To hem the bottom, I decided to try out this heat and bond iron-on adhesive. So I flipped the skirt inside out and decided to do a double fold since the skirt was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be and because the bottom of the skirt was uneven so I wanted to make sure that it was straight when the hem was finished. So I just folded up the bottom and ironed it flat. Then I just followed the instructions of the package. Basically, I ironed the adhesive onto the bottom across the entire length of the skirt. I peeled off the paper lining and then I just folded up the adhesive and ironed it down to secure the hem and did this around the entire width of the skirt. I actually highly recommend this iron-on adhesive. It works really really well. So once I finished hemming the outside fabric, I turned it right side out and to hem the inside lining, I marked where the fabric ended and folded up above that line and pinned. Then I just hand sewed a hem around the entire lining and then I was finished. So this is what it turned out like and I really really like the result. I think it looks a lot cuter than it did before. It's more my style. So this next flip is this blue baby doll. Uh, baby doll? Baby Dude, does it look like I have no hair? Bruh. Uh. 
So for the second thrift flip, I'm flipping this blue baby doll tank top situation shirt. It has kind of this like peasant feel. I guess the theme of this video is just peasant vibes, which I'm kind of digging. So I really like the uniqueness of the shirt. I like the scrunched up like boob area because it really hides the fact that I have like nothing going on here. <laughs> However, I wanted to alter the waist torso area to make it tighter. So I tried on the shirt inside out. I gathered in the sides and marked how much I wanted to take in. I drew out the complete line with fabric chalk and added some pins. Then I just hand stitched the hem and did the exact same thing to the other side. Once I finished, I tried it on and uh, <laughs> how do I put this nicely? It looks like a flaming hot pile of trash. I even tried layering long sleeves underneath to try to make it look better, but it was just like not working out. I don't know if I'm being too hard on myself or it actually looks like terrible, but I decided to take another approach. So I saw this shirt on Reformation. It has this kind of scrunchy type of deal going on on the waist and I decided to try to recreate that. So I tore out the hem that I just sewed, which incidentally tore out my heart because I actually for once thought I did a good job with the hemming. Anyway, I drew out the horizontal lines where I wanted the scrunch to be. Also. I made a little hem at the bottom of the shirt where it was a little bit wider and that I just wanted to take in a little bit. I did this to both sides, obviously. And then I took some elastic that I cut from a wider elastic piece and I cut that to the width that I thought was suitable which honestly means I eyeballed it. So I pinned the elastic down at equidistant points on the shirt so that the scrunch wouldn't be uneven. Dun dun dun, uh, this is foreshadowing. Then I started hand sewing the elastic to the shirt and uh, <laughs> let me tell you, this was an arduous task that was definitely meant to be done with a sewing machine and not done by hand. So usually when you do this, you would stretch out the elastic with both hands and then you would just feed it through the sewing machine. However, in this case, I needed both my hands to sew. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't have four hands. So you can imagine that this could be a little bit difficult. So I had to take kind of a different approach. I knew that there was a higher ratio of length of fabric to length of unstretched elastic. Basically for every one length length of elastic that I sewed, I had to attach double that length of fabric. You know what? Uh, that made absolutely zero sense. So usually when you're sewing, the two layers of fabric are like this and you're sewing up and down so that it's equal lengths of stitches for equal lengths of fabric. Since there's more length of shirt fabric than there is elastic, I need to fit more shirt fabric for a little amount of elastic. Do you know what? I feel like no matter how I explain this, it's gonna make no sense. But let's be honest, I know you're just watching this and you're never actually gonna recreate this, so does it really matter? Anyway, I sewed the elastics onto the two lines that I drew, and once I did that, two hours had passed. And uh, miraculously, it actually did have the effect that I wanted it to have. However, when I flipped it inside out, you can really see the whole I have no idea what I'm doing vibe show through. The scrunch was definitely not evenly distributed throughout because some areas just like completely don't stretch at all, and then some areas are like fine, but you can see in the second row, I definitely definitely improved a lot, which is all that matters. So if you don't look closely, it's perfectly mediocre. So here's what it looks like on, honestly, listen. If the previous version was a flaming hot pile of trash, this version is its fraternal twin. I think objectively, the shirt is like, good enough. Like it's not great, let's let's make that clear. But it's like fine. But since I'm the mother of this child and I spent so much time and energy on this, I'm going to accept it for who it is. And that includes its flaws. Honestly, I'm just surprised that I could pull off the whole scrunching thing by hand and I'm just proud of myself for that. So claps for me. Okay, the last thrift flip is this pastel yellow sweater dress situation. I saw this at the thrift store and I immediately thought of Maddie's outfit from that one episode of Euphoria. I also got like Chanel vibes with the white borders and the neck detailing. I really like the details on the neck and I like the pockets. However, I thought the fit of it was like meh and it just looked kind of like plain Jane. No offense to any Janes out there. So I took it off and marked where I wanted the shirt to end. I drew the line and cut straight across and then 
I got really stressed because I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I want to turn this into a cardigan? But if I do turn it into a cardigan, then I have to worry about the buttons, and I have to worry about how many buttons I don't know how to handle the top, which I want to get a shirt. You see, there was a lot going on in my mind. Um, so I decided to just like put that aside and work on the skirt first. So I started off by seam ripping off the pockets because the positioning just kind of didn't work anymore. They were too high. When I took it off, I realized you could still see the gaps from where the pockets were sewn to the dress. So here's a little hack that also applies to real life. Just flip it around and pretend it doesn't exist. Honestly, people will still be able to see this from the back, but I won't be able to see it, so like, is it really there? Anyway, I tried on the skirt and marked on each side how much I wanted to take in. I turned the skirt inside out and drew out the silhouette of the skirt. And to prevent having to sew twice, I attached some safety pins along the hemline and tried it on to see if it fit and just adjusted the pins anywhere that needed adjusting. Then I just hand stitched along those lines. I actually really enjoy this hand stitching process because for some arbitrary reason, I just really enjoy doing tedious tasks. Like, I just really like doing annoying, repetitive, meaningless actions over and over and over again. I don't know, it just like sparks a lot of joy in me, <laughs> which I don't know how well that reflects on my personality and what I like to do for fun. I just like love doing nothing, but it feels like I'm doing something, you know? So once it was sewn, I just cut off the excess fabric and I flipped it right side out. So since the skirt was already on the short side and I'm gonna be honest with you, I just don't know how to hem sweater fabric. So I just used some fabric glue around the edges to prevent fraying. And yes, the raw edge doesn't look great, but I'm struggling to validate my decision. But while it was drying, I placed the pockets back onto the skirt and sewed them down around the edges. Honestly, I wish I sewed them a little bit farther apart because I feel like they definitely are too close together. I thought that it would stretch farther apart. But anyway, that is it for the skirt. Now for the top, after my full on one hour mental breakdown. I did some research on Pinterest and on Instagram to get some fashion inspo because you guys know I I don't know anything about fashion. Like it's not my expertise. I just like making things. So I decided on turning it into a cardigan. So I took a trip to the thrift store to pick up some buttons. However, I could not find any buttons. So I had to kind of think on my feet. I found these two really elegant looking bracelets. One is just pearls and one is I'm not even gonna pretend to know how to describe these things, but I ended up choosing the pearls just because they're the safer choice. So to make the cardigan, I marked the middle of the shirt and cut straight down. And to prevent fraying, I applied fabric glue to all the raw edges. And the next morning after it dried, I laid out my pearls to see where I wanted them and how many. Then I just attached the pearls to the sweater. Also just a tip with sewing sweater fabric, since the holes are big, you kind of have to anchor your thread to a thread of the fabric so that it doesn't unravel. So after the pearl is on, I just cut a corresponding hole on the other side. Don't cut it too big because the hole will be too loose. I feel like there's an innuendo in there somewhere. Then I went ahead and attached the rest of the pearls and cut each of the corresponding holes. In order to prevent the holes from fraying, I sewed loops around the edges of the holes and then you're done. So here is what the final result looks like. Honestly, it looks nothing like what I originally envisioned for it to look like, but that's usually how these thrift flips work. I actually really, really like the top. The way I've been wearing it is I've been flipping the collar in to create more of an open neckline for a more modern feel but I also can flip it back if I want a more conservative look. I usually just do one button and leave the rest open. That's kind of what I've been seeing on Instagram and Pinterest. As for the skirt, it's fine. <laughs> It'll do. I really like this as a set, but I also like the fact that I can wear them separately. I think I'll probably end up wearing the shirt more though, because I think it's just more versatile. And also, it's freaking cold in Canada right now. So let's be honest, I don't know if I can be wearing either of these things without dying, but... Uh... Yeah. Anyway, those are all of the thrift flips for today. I very much enjoyed challenging myself to do all of these without a sewing machine. It honestly brings me back to my roots in my childhood when I just made things out of things that I already had. I didn't really have materials, I didn't really have many tools, and I still managed to make things. I feel like I kind of just needed a reminder of the essence of DIYing, which is basically just like making do with what you have and making something amazing out of nothing. When did I become a Pinterest quote speaker? machine.
machine. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Also, if you want to see these clothes in action, you can follow me on Instagram at Generation DIY. Shout out of the week is right here. I appreciate you guys so much for watching, and that is it. I will see you guys next time. Bye! Waking up in the morning.